Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today I'm going to walk you through my iOS developer resume that I just updated for 2021. Now, I don't claim to be a resume expert. I have used this resume at plenty of you know major tech companies all throughout Silicon Valley, got complimented a ton. So I wanted to share it and just, you know, give my reasonings, my explanation behind, you know, like why I did what I did. And hopefully you get some ideas or inspirations, you know, steal what you like, leave what you don't. Okay, we are gonna dive in like section by section and I'm gonna explain things, but let's talk about the overall look and feel first, right? Because this may not look like the traditional resume. And on that note, keep in mind, this is for like US job market. I completely understand that certain markets and certain cultures all around the world this may not be applicable, okay? So I wanna put out that disclaimer. However, I chose to do something like this because in my opinion, this shows good product sense. Let me explain, right? Like I'm the product here, right? My resume, I'm applying for jobs, I'm the, the product, right? And to me, showing up with a resume like this, that's, you know, nicely put together, it's easy to read, very skimmable, easy on the eyes. You can get all the information very quickly. It's not just this giant wall of text that are hard to read. Trust me, I've hired, I've looked at hundreds of resumes. They all just blur together after a while and seeing something like this like really stands out. And again, back to like the product and user experience, right? You may know UI, UX from like just building your app, right? You want a great user experience. Well, user experience is everywhere, right? The reader of your resume is the user. So give them a good user experience. As you can see, I use different colors to like separate the sections. We have different font weights for good information hierarchy. The point is to make this very easy to skim, easy to read, easy to get the pertinent information very quickly and efficiently. And I get asked a ton, like how I created this resume. So I'll show you real quick. I just built it in Sketch, right? The, uh, the UI platform here. And you can see kind of like, I keep my history, right? If we go back to the beginning, you can see the, the very first iteration of this. And it's kind of funny. Well, one, you can see Sean with hair, but if you know me now, I really like harp against this. Like I always bash people for doing this. I did it in the beginning, you know? So I always like to keep the history. Uh, I just kind of like copy and paste and then iterate and, and improve and evolve on it. But yeah, like I said, this is just in sketch, you know? So I can like move stuff around like this, whatever, uh, command Z. So a lot of people ask like how I did it. Uh, yeah, I just built it in sketch. It's not like some template I downloaded and just put my stuff in. This is like my own creativity, my own design work. Okay, so back to the resume, let's dive in section by section. I'll zoom in here, we'll start with the top. What you don't see here in the uh, upper left here is my address. I hid that for obvious reasons. But uh, you know, I included an image. Some people recommend against this, uh, I don't know. I like to include it, I think it gives you know personality, it shows like who I am. If you don't want to include a picture, don't include a picture. That's not a big deal. Uh, my name, you know, fitting in with the brand color scheme. There you go. And then I want to talk about this section on the right, because nowadays it's very easy to have like more than just a resume, right? Whether you have like a portfolio website, your Twitter account. I know a YouTube channel is a bit excessive. Not everybody's going to have that, but this is kind of like the extensions of your resume. So it gives people a great place to look. For example, if they go to uh, my website, you know, cool. They can learn more about me here. Oh, he creates courses, cool projects. I can, you know, dive into each project, see where you work. So this is what I kind of like, oh, has a podcast. This is what I refer to as like the extension of your resume, right? And of course the YouTube channel, which you're watching right now, uh, your Twitter account, people will scroll that. So, you know, these are all like, again, extensions of the resume. And then I wanna talk about my, my sections here and like why I chose. Cause I think that's the most important thing. Like not just telling you, here's what I did, but like, here's my thinking. And here's like why I chose to show the information I did. So the about, again, I wanted to keep it very short and just give the high level information. Cause remember at the end of the day, like people read your resume and they want to like have a phone call with you. Like that's like the next step. So giving them a lot of uh, things to talk about or to dive deeper into, I think is a big part of the resume, right? Cause again, as somebody who has done interviews before, it's very nice when people have a lot of interesting things on their resume and that can guide the conversation that we have and I can learn a lot more about them. So for example, I say six years experience. Uh, I spent most of my career leading iOS development for early stage startups in Silicon Valley. So that tells them like where I basically spent most of my work. And then I'm looking to gain, ex uh, to expand my skill set by working on a project that has scale. So I told them what I've done, what I'm looking for. And then, you know, just one sentence about the YouTube channel because that's very unique about me. And that's something you should try to strive for, you know, in the resume is like, what makes you unique? What makes you special? And you, you'll see me kind of come back to that. But yeah, so I run a YouTube channel educating tens of thousands of I, uh, on iOS development in Swift. Of course, you have the typical education, my degrees, you know, not in development. Uh, and then 
recent history, right? I want to like stress this, <laughs> at least this is my opinion. Again, if you disagree with anything I say, that's fine. I'm not going to like argue with you, but uh, I say recent because like the further you go back, like the less pertinent it is to like what you're doing now, especially for me, right? You meant, if you know my story, I started coding in 2015 when I was 33 years old, right? So like, if you look at my timeline down here, which we'll get to later, like, okay, I was doing all state insurance and I was in the Navy on submarines. Great, interesting talking points, but like, has nothing to do with like my development history. So I didn't wanna bog down this uh, recent history section with stuff that was irrelevant. However, I still included it again for the conversation points. So I would recommend if you're doing like a job history, like, you know, don't go all the way back to your high school job, you know, keep it keep it to what's relevant, right? Uh, at least that's my, my thought process and why I chose to only share uh, my previous three developer jobs. And again, in my opinion, I wanted to give the high level of what I did so we can have a conversation about it further, right? So this is, you know, I ran my iOS development YouTube channel to educate people essentially. On the side, I ran a project to create a grocery order and fulfillment uh, app for a client, right? Just that sentence right there could lead to like a half hour conversation uh, with somebody. And then, you know, just again, keep it high level at Aluna. I just let all aspects of iOS development on the project. I was the only developer from creation to launch. Like just that sentence, I was the only uh, developer from creation to launch. Like the person knows that you, you did everything. You don't have to like list out like the stuff you did. You can leave it for a conversation. Uh, again, I continue to consult for Aluna to this day. And the reason I keep this high level and brief again is because I'm trying to surface the most interesting, the most pertinent information so they can quickly get a feel for who I am. I don't need to dive into the details and get into the weeds. That's like, that's where you lose people. You know, you've heard the famous kind of like saying that, you know, people just skim your resume for six to 10 seconds and that's it. So make it easily skimmable and very quick and efficient to get the uh, good information. So again, that's just more on the history. Let's talk about skills because I think this is uh, a little bit interesting and I may think about this differently, right? I didn't just list off a bunch of languages, Xcode, you know, the, the, the skills that all developers should have essentially, right? I wanted to focus on the stuff that again, made me unique. Like what makes Sean special, right? So that's kind of what I wanted to uh, say here in this skills section, right? So the reason I put Swift, even though that is a language, which I kind of just bashed a little bit ago, right? I wanted to sh basically say that like, I have my finger on the pulse. Like I know Swift, maybe not like an expert in the language, but right, right. I've been writing it for five plus years full time. I've been following its evolution since 1.0 pretty closely. You know, I run an educational YouTube channel teaching the fundamentals. I host a weekly YouTube show called Swift News discussing the latest topics. Again, the whole point of this paragraph is to portray, I mean, portray sounds like I'm faking it, but just to show that like, I'm in this world. Like I, I know what's going on in this world. And then the point of consumer facing is to express uh, to, like what I like about development. Cause to me, the most interesting thing about development is something I build, I create that was in my head. Like watching somebody else use that, like that's awesome to me. So I'm big into like UI, UX, building the product, consumer facing stuff. So that's what I wanted to portray with this um, paragraph is to let them know like what I find most interesting about development. And then again, another thing that I feel is like, you know, unique to me, I mean, other people are good at communicating ideas, but kind of what, what is my strength, if you will. Uh, I have a special talent for breaking down complex topics and presenting them in an easy to understand manner. Uh, I get immense fulfillment from mentoring and teaching others. And another purpose to this is like, now that, you know, some of the jobs I'm looking at are more senior, more leadership positions, this is a much bigger deal for the senior, you know, leadership positions than it is for like the beginner ones. Even though this is still a big deal, no matter who you are, but it's just a much bigger deal when you may be like, you know, teaching and mentoring others on the team. And then the last little parts here, right? Side projects. Uh, I always recommend sharing this, like what, what you're doing. It doesn't even have to be developer related. I kind of kept mine developer related, but you know, I run my YouTube business. I run a podcast. I'm, you know, building my indie app creator view. Again, these can all lead to tons of discussion, right? I'm giving the interviewer a ton of stuff to talk about. Uh, other skills, you know, sketch and Photoshop, sales and marketing. I like the other skills to be something that can contribute to, you know, the position potentially, but aren't developer related, like sales and marketing, emotional intelligence. Again, as I'm going for more, you know, leadership positions. And then interest, like I said, I always recommend sharing something about you. Again, I've had interviews that started off with a discussion about Star Wars. You know, we talked for the first 15 minutes about Star Wars and that may seem like a waste of time, but you're also building rapport with your interviewer because at the end of the day, like, yes, people want to hire people they like, they like, or they genuinely share interests with, you know, you have to have the developer skills, of course, but there's also that, like, do I, do I like this person? Would I enjoy working with them? That's a big factor. So I always recommend sharing your interests because uh, most likely, especially if you share a bunch of them like I did, there's gonna be some shared interest somewhere. 
And then lastly, the timeline at the bottom. Uh, this is a bit redundant, I'll admit, because like the final three on the right here, Brathometer, Independent Contractor, Aluna. I guess I don't have Brathometer on this recent history, but it kind of mirrors that. Really what this timeline does is it gives a snapshot into like my whole life, if you will, right? Like, hey, right out of high school, I went into the Navy on submarines. Then I was, you know, all state insurance agent. Then I finally got, right? This tells a little bit of a story that again, the interviewer can dive in at. Like, I don't know, I can't tell you how many submarine conversations I've had, uh, on interviews based on this. Again, building rapport with the interviewer. Give them a lot to work with and you'll find the conversation will go uh, a lot better. Now, like I said earlier, just having a resume like is fine and all, but nowadays with the internet, websites, YouTube channels, Twitter accounts, all that, like it's great to have these extensions, you know, like your website or portfolio up here. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you build that iOS developer website portfolio, get it up and running very quickly. I say this all the time. We're developers. We, we have the tendency to want to build it ourselves, but you know, there's a lot of upkeep going into building and maintaining your own website, right? You got to manage all the different screen sizes, mobile, iPad. Uh, does it work on Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, if that still exists, right? You have to deal with all that stuff, and many people don't think about that. And that gives you a lot of overhead. And as an iOS developer, uh, I just want to build apps. I don't really care about building websites, just me. So if you're an iOS developer, I think Squarespace is a great way to just kind of take that off your plate. And if you're worried about design, they have all kinds of great themes to make it look beautiful. They handle all the analytics SEO for you. So when you're ready to start building that portfolio or website, go to squarespace.com to get started. And when you're ready to actually launch it, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So that wraps it up for the 2021 iOS dev resume. Again, take what you like, leave what you don't. I don't claim to be an expert. Just hopefully this gave you some ideas uh, to improve yours. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one.